Hey guys, how's it going today? All right. Well, welcome to you. Welcome you to a packed full house. I guess this is what happens when you have uh, a talk about deployment during lunchtime. So to be expected. So, anyways, um, well, yeah. Welcome to DevOps. I'm really excited to be here. This is one of the first times I'm doing something that's a little bit outside of the realm of a WordCamp. So I work for a company that is primarily based around WordPress. How many people here uh, use WordPress? OK. You guys came to the right place. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I was actually afraid that half of you were going to say no and that you're just like in the wrong room or something. So OK, cool. So let's, uh, let's move onwards. So that's me. I'm Edmund. Um, I work at WP Engine as a sales engineer. And uh, it's a little bit of a different role for me. As you can tell, I've been a front-end developer for over 15 years. I started out uh, at static HTML pages, and then we sort of grew into content management, and I went through a bunch of different systems, finally did some Drupal work, and landed at WP Engine about three years ago. Um, so my role is technical, but I'm also uh, sales and client facing. Uh, so, um, and just recently I've done my AWS certification, so it was really uh, actually quite difficult to, to get through, um, but, but that's something of a, a, a big achievement. Um, you can reach me on uh, Twitter as well as my LinkedIn. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about CICD in our very short time slot. I was just looking at the time already because it's going by. Um, we'll talk about how WordPress and CICD can work together. I'll look at a deployment pipeline that I've built, and uh, hopefully we'll get into some of the things I learned. What is CICD? So continuous integration, it's a, it's a very sort of modern approach to development where, and if you think back to the days where you had a software version and a release that happened like maybe on a, a physical medium like, like a CD, you would do a release every six months or a year if it was a large, uh, you know, a large software. Um, and this is the idea that you're working and actually releasing things on a, a regular basis and, and could be actually quite quickly. So it could be several times a day, multiple developers are pushing code into the same repository. So the benefit there is that we're also, as we're pushing, we're testing. And we're, not, um, we're avoiding a situation where some of the older code may not work with the current code base. Um, so a really big benefit there. There's, there's a, a, a you know, very unique process. Uh, but I think that the, the really important parts are the testing and the build. Uh, of course, planning is, is key as well. Uh, continuous delivery is the idea that you can do a deployment at any given time. So you'll, you'll be able to have a process built around your deployment. Uh, and that's really important because we're, gonna, we're working with CI, so continuous integration. We may actually want to release things more than, well, hopefully not more than once a day, but it's possible. You have to be ready at any time, and that, that's really the idea behind CD. So the next step from here on in, you can actually take this one step further and automate your delivery. So that's continuous deployment, and that is sort of the basis of what I want to talk about today, and that's, that's sort of the tool that I use to overcome a, a customer issue. Um, so yeah, instead of manually pushing out or triggering a, a build or deployment, this is a process that will watch a branch. It, it looks at your repository. It knows when a branch has been pushed. And it's actually able to start a deployment process straight away. Uh, so fully automated. And it, it, it's the, if you think of a, a SaaS or a PaaS platform, you, have, you, do, you don't have a, a day where version 2 comes out. It just You have new features that are rolled into that platform at any time. All right, so where does WordPress fit into all this? Um, so just a little bit of background on WordPress. It is 30% of the web, which is huge. And that, that's really amazing that anything can be that large. What I find really interesting is that out of all the content management systems, WordPress is 60% of that market. So that's also quite a big achievement. I've always thought that WordPress was a blogging tool, but perhaps it's grown a bit more. It's more of an enterprise tool because you see more 
uh, larger brands using WordPress than smaller brands overall. And that's, that's actually Alexa top 500 sites. Um, some of the things that you should know about WP Engine is, um, so we're about 500 people now, mainly 200 people working in our support organization, which is 24-7. 5% of the web will go to a WP Engine site every day. And we have 75,000 customers. That number, however, has changed uh, very rapidly, so it's, it's probably uh, quite a bit more now. Um, so as you guys probably know with working uh, around WordPress, it is built around a couple of core technologies. You have PHP, JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. At the, the core, it's, it's probably not the most advanced system to be using, especially being surrounded by all the other technologies that we have here at DevOps. Uh, but it is very popular. You have a, a huge community user base, and, uh, and, and one of the benefits of WordPress is that it's actually really simple to use, and I think that's, that's why it's been so, uh, so strong and, and been around for, what, 13, probably 14 years now. Uh, most developers, when they're working in WordPress, will want to do one or two things with it. There's possibly a third, um, but... Uh, Generally, you'll, you'll work on theme development. So actually taking a graphic design concept and building that out based around the functionality of the site or the, the content management system. The second approach would be to build a plugin. So you use PHP to, or uh, maybe MySQL to, to do something unique, extend WordPress and do something that hasn't been done. Or perhaps you can do something that's been done already, but you can write your own code and keep it so that you're, you're actually responsible and know what each line of code is doing, uh, which is probably better than using a third-party plugin because you own it and you maintain it. You're going to use what you've actually written, and you're probably not going to build things that you won't, whereas with third-party plugins, you have a lot of stuff that you may not actually use. Um, so the, and, and I'll just elaborate on the third part of what you would do with WordPress core development so you could be a contributor and actually uh, work on WordPress core. Uh, so I, I put up a slide here with Composer because one of the customers that I was dealing with was uh, really interested in the WP Engine platform. They wanted a way to use Composer to install plugins. That's something that we don't do. So that's something at WP Engine, it's not part of the platform, you can't run Composer. Um, so it was a challenge for me. I didn't want to go back and say, well, sorry, we, we don't do that, and you know, we, we, can't, we can't get you on the platform. Um, so I started looking around at some of the other solutions out there and, and thinking about, well, maybe if we can't do it, maybe there's some other way to, to use Composer uh, in, in the way that the customer wanted. Um, and that's how I, I sort of landed on a, a continu continuous deployment. So what the customer wanted to do is, is actually relatively simple, and, and it's really clean. So at WP Engine, we use WordPress core, but we update the core. So there's actually no real reason to have that in your repository. You can use the most current version, and then we'll update on your production environment what uh, you know, the, the most current version is. Uh, so in this case, they wanted to use Composer to actually pull in their plugins, and so we're not going to keep plugins in the repository. So best practice is if the code is already maintained somewhere else, you probably shouldn't have it in your repository. Uh, and so that really leaves us with a, a small amount of files here. We're only really versioning the theme. So um, it really comes down to uh, the theme and any files that, any images or assets that are used in the theme and uploads are also ignored from the repository. Uh, uh, you could sync those. If you want to do local development, you could sync them down. Um, so the tool that I found uh, really useful is called CodeShip. And what CodeShip does is it spins up a virtual machine, or I, I, I think it can do, in the, in the pro version, it can do containers, and it gets quite advanced. Um, but Anytime you push to your, your master branch or any branch that CodeShip is watching, it starts the deployment process. Um, the benefit is that I can do anything. If you think of there's a black box after my uh, git push, so I git push, uh, and then the black box is, um, is CodeShip. And all of your code is actually running. You can script whatever happens in CodeShip, and then that will deliver it to your production environment. 
Um, one of the other benefits is that you can do multiple pipelines. So I can set up a, a different pipeline for staging and development as I have for production. Um, and I can show you somewhat of an example of that uh, as we go through some of the code. Um, deployment pipeline. So this is uh, essentially the idea here is we're going to take a, a group of tasks and segment them into different sections. Um, so that's, that's what I've done here. Um, and it's really simple. So I, I was trying to figure out something to fit into uh, a very short amount of time. Um, and I, I think this is, this is probably a, a good amount of, of things for us to look at uh, without it being too technical. Um, so configuration, I'm literally just setting up what, uh, what the code chip box will do. And it's, it's really some basic things in order for this build process to happen. And after a build, it's, a, it's essentially running a bunch of tasks. Uh, we will then deploy out to WP Engine. So this is what the deployment script looks like. It's, um, it's actually pretty basic. I'll, I'll walk through this line by line. And I think that it, it's probably simple enough for most people to understand, at least conceptually. So um, that's my pointer. There we go. Um, so I'm just using the most recent version of PHP, and I'm using a stable version of Node, so NVM, most stable version. I set up some flags for Git, uh, so I'll set the, um, uh, a couple of vari variables, so username and user email, and then I'll add a remote so that I can push out to my WP Engine production install. I use Gulp and Bower. Um, those are dependencies that the, the build script will need, so I use npm to install them. Uh, I will change into my theme directory where I have a composer.json file, and then I can run composer. So that's where I have my plugins listed in that JSON file or the JSON lock. And essentially, that is the part of the, the process that the customer wanted to do that we couldn't do. So this is how we've, we've sort of overcome the issue and we're, we're able to do it here in, in configuration. Um, so WordPress has its own plugin repository, but it's actually subversion. Um, there's a, another repo called WPackagist, which is a mirror of that, but it's, it's a Git repo. So I, I use packages to pull in all of the plugins that I'm, I'm using. You can even use it for a WordPress core. It's got, uh, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's very rapidly updated, so any plugin that's in the WordPress repo should be in, in the packages repo. So, so from there, and the build script is actually really simple. So I'm not really doing too much here. So I'm doing npm install, just, just running any packages that I need for, for the, uh, the build process. Uh, Bower install for jQuery and for Bootstrap. And uh, gulp production. So the production flag here is, uh, it actually comes out of the theme that I'm using. So I use the, the uh, Sage theme and Sage has the build script already created for you. And what it does on production is it does some uh, uh, image compression, it does some CSS minification, concatenation, and it, it also does your SAS compiling. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty simple process for if I leave the production flag off, then it will actually just, uh, it will create source maps. I think it does a couple of other things that you'd want to do in your development environment that you probably wouldn't want in production. So it's, it's relatively simple, um, and I, you could extend that, you could write your own, but in this case, the simplest way to do it was just to use Sage. I, um, I realized that after doing the build, I've got a bunch of files that I probably don't need on the server, so I just remove them from the repository. I add everything that I do need, and then I've commit committed that into the repo and pushed to WP Engine with the force flag. And force flag is, is essentially, if I don't have force, it will throw an error. And this is your overriding everything that is on the production environment. And that's exactly what I want, because I want to get rid of those files. And I want anything that I've just built to be a part of the production build. What did I learn? I learned that time's up. 
<laughs> uh, very, very quickly. So um, if you're creative, you can overcome objections that, so essentially I could have said, no, customer, I can't do this. And then, you know, if, if you look outside of the box, maybe sometimes you can find different ways to, uh, to overcome objections. Uh, WordPress definitely can be used in a modern situation with deployment. I think there's a huge benefit. And also, uh, pipelines can be used. Uh, other uh, CI, CD providers can be used with WordPress. So it's actually a good thing that we don't have that as part of our platform because many customers have already decided that they like one approach over another. I've got some resources here. I will put this on SlideShare and I will, uh, I will tweet that out. Uh, and then one last thing. Um, so I'm set up at the WP Engine booth outside for the rest of the day. We are looking for a sales engineer for the London office. So if you guys are interested or know anybody who's really technical but good with uh, customer client-facing role, uh, come and talk to me. Thanks, guys. Thank